Penny Boudreau murdered her 12-year-old daughter, Carissa, because she believed it would save her relationship with her boyfriend. Welcome to this episode of Human Wreckage True Crime Podcast. In this episode, we will be talking about the tragic case of Carissa Boudreau, how her life was stolen from her by the one person who is supposed to protect her from the evils in the world. Let's get into it. Carissa Boudreaux was a 12-year-old girl living in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, Canada, with her mother, Penny Boudreaux, and her mother's boyfriend, Vernon Macumber. Bridgewater is a riverside town boasting of around 8,000 residents. It's located southeast of Halifax. In this quaint town, people look after their neighbors and smiles are exchanged in the street with strangers. Previously, Carissa had lived with her father, Paul Boudreaux, in Shelburne County before moving into Penny and Vernon's two-bedroom apartment in Bridgewater. The relationship between Penny and Carissa was said to be tempestuous with the duo frequently bickering. On the 27th of January, 2008, Penny and Carissa drove to a local grocery store. They had been arguing back and forth in the car and Penny decided that she would do what she had to do. As Carissa sat in the car, Penny went into the grocery store and called Vernon. She told him that Carissa was missing. But Carissa wasn't missing. She was sitting right there in the parked car. Unbeknownst to Carissa, her mother was planning something completely reprehensible. Following the call, Penny climbed back into the car and drove Carissa to a quiet roadside and ordered her out. Penny pushed her only child to the ground and wrapped a piece of twine around her hands and then wrapped it around her daughter's neck, pulling with all of her strength. Mommy, don't, were Carissa's last words, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. With her knees shoved into Carissa's chest, Penny glared into her daughter's eyes as she strangled the life out of her. When Carissa's heaving gasp stopped, Penny loaded her lifeless body in the trunk of the car and drove around deciding what to do next. Penny pulled the car into Tim Hortons to throw out the incriminating twine before driving to the icy Lahey River. She dragged Carissa's body out of the trunk and dumped her next to the river. Penny also removed some of Carissa's clothing to make it look as though she had been sexually assaulted, deferring suspicion from herself. Penny then drove home and reported Carissa missing, just as a snowstorm swept into the region. Penny claimed Carissa, who was stewing from their argument, ran away while she was in the grocery store. An intensive search of the town and surrounding area was ordered, including sweeps of the now partially frozen La Have River. The town rallied together in an attempt to find Carissa and return her home safely. They believed that time truly was of essence. There was no way the lightly dressed young girl could survive the harsh weather that had rolled in. Locals braved the storm to hand out missing person flyers to passers-by. On two separate occasions, Penny appealed to the public for help in finding her daughter as search crews scoured the area. I just want you to come home, she pleaded. We all love you, Carissa. I love you. On the 9th of February, a motorist from out of town stumbled across Carissa's body. It would be another five days until her body was positively identified by dental records. The autopsy showed that Carissa had been strangled and investigators soon announced that the murder was an isolated incident. It was the first murder in Bridgewater in nearly 20 years. Almost from the beginning, police had suspected Penny, but with no evidence, she was questioned and released. The area where Chris's body was found subsequently became an impromptu memorial with mourners leaving hundreds of trinkets, toys, and flowers to commemorate the life of Carissa. I guess we're just paying our respects, said one woman who lived in another town. It's so hard to believe. The following week, Carissa was laid to rest. So many people came to pay their last respects that they spilled out into the car park of H.M. Huskelson's funeral home. Carissa's former pastor, Reverend Perry Ingersoll, led the service which included a slideshow depicting various moments in Carissa's short life accompanied by her favorite song, Bubbly by Colby Kalat. No human reason or sense can be found in the sense that such a young, beautiful, energetic life would be snatched so quickly away before its hopes and plans had even begun to be realized, said the pastor. Two of Carissa's aunts read poems to the weeping crowd, but there was one person amongst the congregation that remained stone-faced throughout the emotional service, Penny. She was the only person in attendance who knew exactly what happened to Carissa, and the slow wheels of justice were catching up with her. Shortly after her daughter's funeral, Penny moved to Halifax. Police continued to investigate Penny as a suspect in her daughter's murder, 
and in a controversial move, undercover officers were assigned to pose as a member of a crime syndicate. These officers made contact with Penny and promised to help her out if she confessed to them that she murdered her daughter and how she did it. In June of the same year, Penny did just that. Penny confessed that she killed Carissa after Vernon gave her an ultimatum for their relationship to survive. According to Penny, Vernon said that she had to pick between him or her daughter. Penny confessed to the undercover officer that she would do anything for Vernon and the thought of losing him was harder than the thought of losing her daughter. Her motivation even shocked experts that have spent their entire career studying homicides. Mothers who kill their children are rare, and those who are motivated because they feel as though their child is in the way of a relationship are even more rare. In half of the cases where a mother does kill their child, the victim is less than a year old. The other half of murders perpetrated by mothers occurs when the victim is between one and two years of age. It's exceptionally rare for a mother to kill a child as old as 12. As Penny made her first court appearance, she clutched a tissue and sobbed, but said nothing as the murder charge was read to her. As she was led out the door of the courthouse, a number of people who had gathered outside taunted her. Child killer, one shouted with another shouting, murderer. The display of raw emotion was understandable. A vast majority of the residents had assisted in the search for Carissa and were distraught to learn her own mother knew exactly what happened to her all along. In reference to Penny's so-called motive, Carissa's father, Paul Boudreaux, said, The options were there, and you know for a parent to make that decision, I still can't comprehend it. Penny Boudreaux pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of second-degree murder and received a life sentence. The plea deal was agreed to avoid a trial. Under the so-called faint hope clause, Penny can apply for parole after 15 years. In 2018, she was granted four escorted leaves to attend church services. A psychological assessment found that Penny falls within a very low range to reoffend. The Crown ruled that Vernon Macumber was not involved in the murder. Following the arrest of Penny, Macumber claimed that he hadn't offered an ultimatum and instead had suggested that something needed to be done about the constant arguing between Penny and Carissa. Macumber has said that he feels immeasurable guilt about what happened to Carissa. It was just avoidable, he said. I think about her all the time, though. Thank you for joining me. All I can say is I hope Penny is having a rough time in prison. Truly a heartbreaking case. If you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel. Please take care of yourselves. Thank you.